good morning uh, we will discuss uh, now uh, functions of random variables or transformations of random variables so this is a topic that is motivated as follows so you may have a random variable uh, which maps the sample space to the real line however you may be interested not the exact value of the random variable itself but some function of it okay so you may measure x right directly but you may be interested in the distribution and statistical properties of let's say x square or log x or something like that because your your application may demand that log x is of more importance to you than x itself for example right that can, that very often happens in applications in engineering and statistics so this is the motivation for studying functions of random variables <coughs> see you should recall that random variables are themselves functions right so when we talk of functions of random variables we are talking about composition of two functions right so if you have some probability space omega fp and our random variable x is mapping omega to real line such that pre images of borel sets are f measurable right now you may be interested in some function of x right so let's so let's say that f is some function that takes values from r to r to begin with right so what f does is it maps so this is another real line okay and this guy maps so this is x of omega and f will simply map so this is f okay so f so once omega realizes x of omega is a fixed number and f will map that further to another point here which is f of x of omega all right fine now uh, if you look at the overall mapping so if you don't look at this real line at all this overall map will be f composition x right it looks as though you're mapping it twice right so you're essentially when you're talking about function of a random variable you're talking about composition of two functions from omega to r okay so the problem is so if you are given the probability law or the cdf of x i want to determine the probability law or the cdf of f of x f of capital x right now before that we must address whether this composed mapping f composition x right whether that is a random variable at all right so random variable uh, so you if you want to speak about the distribution of uh, x we know how to do that but if you want to talk about the probability or cdf of f of x we have to first establish that f of x is a random variable right what does that mean it means that if i take borel sets here its its pre image must be f measurable here only then is f of x a random variable right by definition correct if i just look at it as one mapping f composition x under that compos composed mapping i must have pre images of borel sets are events right now uh, one see one sufficient condition for that to happen is that if f were to be a borel measurable function which means that if i have borel sets here its pre images here are borel sets suppose that is the case then the pre image of that will be an f measurable set right so if so whenever f is a borel measurable function i will necessarily have f composition x is a it's a legitimate random variable is it clear to everyone right so what i'm saying is if f is borel measurable
which means I E pre images of Borel sets or Borel sets. Then F composition X is a random variable on omega f p. Agreed with that? Because what I am saying is so f is a Borel measurable function or simply a Borel function it is that is like saying that if you take any Borel set here it is pre image under f must be a Borel set on r and of course, if you have a Borel set here it is pre image must be f measurable because x is a random variable correct. So, is this statement okay with everyone? Okay. So, the problem is a more precisely stated problem is if you have a Borel function f, f x is a random variable and I want to determine the probability law of f of x given the probability law of x right that is the problem confronting us all right. And now I mean this is you can even speak about uh, now functions mapping R n through R m in general right you may for example, have n random variables right x 1 through x n defined on omega f p and you may want to talk about f of x 1 x 2 x n right. So, you may have um, let us say f is from let us say f, f is r into r it could just just as well be r m uh, then you have sample space then you have some r n here all right. So, you have some x 1 x 2 dot, dot x n right. So, you have a map from omega f p the same underlying pro, uh, uh, probability space is being mapped to some vector in r n right these guys are all random variables living in omega f p ok. Which means that if you take Borel sets on r n their pre images are events f measurable and now you have some function this could also be r m let us let me just draw f right. So, this will be this will be f of dot 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 right this will be f of x 1 x 2 x n of omega right. So, here too you want if you take any Borel set it is pre image must be a Borel set in R n and of course, every Borel set in R n's pre image is event is an event right. So, here too the same thing holds right if f f is Borel measurable then f of x 1 x 2 if f is Borel measurable then f of x 1 x 2 dot 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 x n is a random variable on omega f p. Again here the question will be given the joint law of x 1 through x n what is the C d f of f of x 1 x 2 x n right. So, that is that is what we are going to discuss. So, are there any questions on the setup? everything ok so far ok. So, our agenda will be as follows first we will consider some special uh, case of special cases uh, of these functions. So, first we will consider uh, maxima maxima and minima maximum and minimum of random variables which is actually fairly easy. Then we will consider sums of random variables ok because they are of maximum minima and sums are like uh, uh, of great importance. And then we will consider general transformations, some f, some generic f. Okay. 
So, our agenda will be first we will discuss uh, max maximum and minimum, then we will discuss sums of random variables and finally, we will address more general transformations. or more general functions. So, we will discuss maximum and minimum first. Okay. Let x 1, x 2 dot 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 x n be random variables on omega f p with joint c d f capital F x 1, x 2 dot x n of little x 1, little x 2, little x n. Let y n is equal to min of z n is equal to max of so you are considering n random variables. So, a finite finite set of random variables x 1 through x n whose joint C D F is given to you okay. and you are looking at the min of this x 2 x 1 through x n and max of x 1 through x n. Okay. So, what does this mean? For every omega, so whenever omega realizes I have x 1 omega, x 2 omega, x n omega realizing as real numbers right. For each such omega y n of omega will be the smallest of those numbers and z n of omega will be the largest of those numbers correct. So, for some particular omega x 3 may be the smallest, but for some other omega x 1 may be the smallest and similarly for z n right. So, you are looking at the distribution of the smallest of these x i's and the largest of these x i's. Okay. Is that clear? So, now uh, are these even random variables? We have to we see this is some function this is like that right f of x 1 x 2 x n max uh, is max of x 1 x 2 x n a measurable function or for that matter is min of x 1 x 2 x n a measure, measurable function. Right, that is the question right once we say yes it is a random variable then we can go ahead and talk about its cdf or probability law right <coughs> so we have to first establish that uh, note that y n and z n are indeed random variables since so what do i have to show i have to show that pre images of borel sets here or borel sets here right but here actually because this is such a simple function there's a easier way of doing this okay so for example if i take let's say yn okay so, the event if I take the event that y n of omega is less than or equal to little y. Well, maybe I should do it for z n first, okay. it is a little bit easier with the maximum. Okay. Ah, let me do it with z n little, little z n uh, little z. Okay. So, I want to show that that is z n is a random variable. 
So, if I show that this is an f measurable set I am done correct, because this means that the pre image of the semi infinite interval here is in fact an event correct. Any questions? So, if I show this is a valid event I am done, uh, but z n is the so this is the event that this is the event that maximum of x 1 omega dot dot, dot x n omega is less than or equal to little z right correct. Next note that the maximum is less than or equal to little z is equivalent to saying that each one of them is less than or equal to z right that is the key step. So, this is equal to the set of all omegas for which x 1 of omega is less than or equal to z and x 2 of omega less than or equal to z dot 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 x n of omega less than or equal to z. So, when I write comma again I mean intersection right what I actually mean is intersection i equal to 1 to n omega such that x 1 of omega less than or equal to z and so on right x x i of omega less than or equal to z that is it fine with me so far. Now, what kind of a set is that? So, this is some semi infinite cuboid in R n right and x 1 to x n are random variables and in R n if you take any semi infinite cuboid in R n its pre image has to be f measurable why x 1 through x n are random variables correct. So, if x 1 through x n are random variables pre images of Borel sets are f measurable in particular the semi infinite cuboids on R n are the generating class. So, their pre images are certainly so these are this is an f measurable set for sure right because x 1 through x n are random variables. So, this is an f measurable set correct are there any questions so max was very easy right yes is it uh, yes that is a ball scenario right because x is a random variable yeah, 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 no, no, no. That's true. But every time, so what you're saying is that Zn is always one of the xi's, but it, it's the i will be different from different realizations. No, no, no. So what I'm saying is that, so if for some omega, so for some particular omega, it may be x3, but for some other omega, it may be x5, right? So the index of the maximum itself is a is something random correct you cannot fix that index it is not as though a particular x i is always the maximum right correct. So, you, it's no, you cannot claim that a z n is always one of the x i's and x i is a random variable. So, z is a random variable that is not correct because it is true that z is always one of the x i's, but that i itself is random it becomes depends on omega correct. Yes, but it is enough to prove for the generating class. So, if pre images of semi infinite intervals are f measurable, then you can show that pre images of all Borel sets are f measurable. Okay. Now, similarly, how will you show that y n is a random variable? Let us do this here. How do you show f so y n? 
so let us look at now I am going to look at y n of omega greater than z uh, little y let us say okay. If this is an f measurable set then necessarily y n of omega less than or equal to y will be a measure measurable set because it is only the complement right and why am I taking greater here because I am dealing with the minimum right eventually I am going to write. So, I am going to write omega this is omega such that x 1 of omega greater than. So, well first I should write minimum x 1 omega dot 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 x n omega greater than y right and if you are saying that the minimum of all these guys is itself greater than y then each of them must be greater than y right they are equivalent right this is equivalent to saying that omega this is omega such that x 1 of omega greater than y comma x 2 of omega greater than y dot dot, dot x n of omega greater than y. Alright, so again commas mean intersection. So, is this step clear? This is the key step. Now, so this is now this is an f measurable set, right? You are just you, this you can show us an f measurable set because this is like so this is like a semi infinite cuboid, but it is pointing the other way, right? You can show this is a f measurable set. Okay, so this is an event, right? So this is f measurable, and again this is f measurable. So we have proved that both y n and z n are valid random variables, right? So now I ta now our task is to determine the CDF of this z n y. All right. So let us. So actually, these cal these expressions themselves provide a very easy way to calculate the CDF. In fact, so I know this is the event whose probability I'm after. After all, right? My CDF is after all the p of this event. Correct. So next, f z n of z will be equal to probability that omega for which z n of omega less than or equal to little z that is equal to probability of omega for which x 1 of omega less than or equal to z dot 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 x n of omega less than or equal to z right. So, I am just putting p here and p here right. Now, what is this? Do I know this? I want this right. Do I know this? This is the joint C D F evaluated at z z z z z right. So, this is equal to f x 1 x 2 dot dot x n of little z little z little z dot 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 understand what I mean. So, you are given the joint C D F of x 1 through x n if you replace each of the arguments with z you will get the C D F of your maximum is that clear. And similarly, I want to talk about the C D F of y, what would I do? 
ha i will do 1 minus this right or rather if i just take the probability of this event i will get 1 minus the cdf correct the complementary cdf as it's called right and so i say um, f y n bar of y right this is complementary cdf Right, that is equal to 1 minus f n of y f y n of y rather that is equal to probability omega for which s x 1 greater than y dot 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 x n greater than y. Now, what is that? It is not really 1 minus this is the uh, right this is I mean this is really that. So, this is like the complementary joint C D F right which you can calculate from the joint CDF right. So, in the max you directly get CDF in terms of CDF here you get complementary CDF in terms of joint complementary CDF correct. Uh, so, maybe I should write just write this as f bar x 1 through x n of uh, y y y. This is the joint complementary CDF. Okay. So, if you give me the CDF, I can find the CDF of the maximum and minimum, right. So, this is this assumes nothing further, right. This does not assume that x i's are, I mean, x i's can be any random variables, they can be some of them could be discrete, some of them, you know, it anything is possible. You are just given some joint CDF, right. I am not assuming anything further about what the whether they are discrete or continuous or otherwise or I am not even assuming anything about the joint distribution. I am not assuming independence in particular right. It is just some arbitrary joint distribution. So, this is a completely general expression. However, if you consider the special case where x i s are independent x 1 x 2 x n are independent then these formula these all these formula will simplify right. So, in particular for example, for the maximum what would you get? You have the joint CDF evaluated at z z z, but the joint CDF will factorize product out correct. So, this will become f x of z power n right. So, here again you will have the complementary CDF to the nth power right. In particular, if x1, x2 dot 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 x n are independent, so first of all, first first let me do the case when they are independent. Okay, so I will have f z n of z will be equal to product. f x i of z, z is equal to uh, uh, i is equal to 1 through n is that correct? Because my joint CDF will factorize right. Further if x 1 to x n are independent and 
identically distributed iid means this is the first time we are encountering this i think independent and identically distributed uh, it's just as the word says right if they are independent and they have the same cdfs which means all these fxis of z are the same function fx right with cdf fx then the maximum will be distributed as this will be simply the so all these are the same function now so now it will be the nth power right so if they are independent you will multiply the cdfs uh, if they are independent and identically distributed you will take nth power of the common cdf well i should say z here right fine similarly you can do the same thing for the minimum so in this case what would you get you will get uh, you will get f so the complementary cdf of y as the product of the complementary cdf of each of these x's and in the case when they are identically distributed you will have the nth power of the complementary cdf right next uh, we have uh, for the minimum we have f y n of y is the bar is equal to product so i am still with the independent case okay product i equals 1 through n uh, it will be f x bar of uh, well f x i bar of y correct because of this formula i had here and this fy fy f bar will product out the complementary cdf will also product out right uh when x1 to xn are independent and fyn bar of y is equal to fx bar of y to the nth when x1 to xn are independent and identically distribute iid okay okay so far okay so let's consider one or two examples so that completes the theory bit so so far okay any questions on this random variables function why not we need to prove that there is random variable with respect to 2 ha see yes that's what we need to prove but here there was an easier way out and so you can you directly proved that pre majors of semi infinite intervals are events you exploited the fact that this x1 xn x1 through xn are random variables it's also possible theories random variable with respect to 2 yes it is it is it is so no is a random variable with respect to i mean there's random variable just means the measurable function finally it should be a measurable function on omega right you can prove it whichever way you want whether you want to prove that fs borel 
from R to R that is fine or if you want to prove that pre majors of all Borel sets are f measurable that is also fine. Here we proved that pre majors of semi infinite measure events are semi infinite intervals are f measurable that is that is enough. See usually the definitions of measurable function we make in terms of pre majors of Borel sets, but it is very difficult to verify verify that right because Borel sets can be so complicated and their pre majors can also be quite complicated and you have to do this for all Borel sets. So, what you do is just verify for the generating class and it then follows that it holds for all Borel sets right it is something you need to prove. Okay, examples. Let x one and x two be independent, identically distributed. Uh, Let's say uniformly distributed random variables. So you remember uniformly distributed random variables, right? in 0 1 let us say. Let z is equal to max x 1 x 2 and y is equal to min x 1 x 2. So, you have x 1 and x 2 inducing a uniform measure on 0 1 okay, and they are independent. Okay. So, they are independent and identically distributed random variables and you are looking at the maximum of the two and minimum of the two. Okay. The question is how are they distributed. Okay. So, are there any guesses on how qualitatively they may look? So, you are taking two identically distributed random variables on 0 1 independent and you are taking the larger of the two and the smaller of the two. Sorry? Okay, qualitatively. See, it is clear that both z and y have to take only values in 0 1 right. We are talking about two values two random variables uh, which are both taking values in 0 1 right. We know that z and y have to be dependent because z is bigger than y right fine and if you look at the distributions of distribution of z what do you think it will look like. it will be. So, it will be more towards 0 or more towards 1. Yeah, So, z will have more mass towards 1 and y will have more mass towards 0 that what that is what you would expect right. So, let us actually verify this with our formula that we just derived here. So, we have f. So, what is f x? So, f x 1 and f x 2 are both. So, f x 1 of x will be uh, x is not it. So, will be uh, 0 x and 1 depending on whether x is less than 0 or x is in 0 1 or x is greater than 1 right. This is our CDF. So, from our formula there you can immediately see that f z of x f z of z if you like. f z of little z will be equal to f x of little z to the so square right f x well by f x I mean either f x 1 or f x 2 they are both the same right is that ok. So, this will be equal to 0 z square or 1 depending on whether z is less than 0 
z is in 0 1 or z is bigger than 1 correct. So, that looks like so, if I plot capital F z of z, it will look like a parabola, right? Fine. And you can see clearly that this function is differentiable except at these two points, right? And you can actually get a density as well, right? After all, uh, x1 and x2 are continuous random variables and z also turns out to be a continuous random variable. So, your density p d f f z of little z will be what? Will be 2 z is not it? 2 z if z is in 0 1 uh, 0 otherwise right. So, your little f z Uh, will be like this uh, little f z will be 0 outside outside this and here and here. So, at 0 and 1 there is no derivative, but you can define it as whatever you want does not matter and in, in between it is equal to 2 z right. So, it will look like that right is equal to right. So, the p d f looks like okay. and that is a valid p d f obviously. So, you, you see that, so more of the mass is towards 1 right, it is likely to be closer to 1, the maximum is likely to be closer to 1 and similarly, Uh, you can prove that f y y is the minimum right. So, f y of little y will be equal to. So, f y bar of little y will be equal to uh, 1 minus y square is not it will be 0 sorry will be 1. 1 minus y whole squared or 0 depending on whether y is less than 0, y is in 0 1 or y greater than 1. Okay. And from here, you can get the density again. Okay. Uh, is this correct, or am I missing something? So I'm just taking the complementary CDF of x, which is yeah, which is one minus y, and I'm squaring that. I think this is correct, right? Huh. So the PDF will be. Now, the if you plot the PDF, it will be the derivative of this. That will look like look like that, right? Be twice one minus y. Right? It will look like that. So the minimum is has more mass towards zero, as you would expect. Is that clear? Okay. Any questions? Yes. Ah, so this is complementary CDF. So one minus that will be your CDF. Right, and you differentiate that, you'll get a PDF. Okay. 
Okay, let me just do one more example in the five minutes that remain. So, example number two, let x1, x2 dot 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 xn be independent random variables which are exponentially distributed with parameters. So, exponential is a parameter is by one positive parameter lambda, right. So, I am going to give you the parameters lambda 1, lambda 2, dot dot dot, lambda n greater than 0. So, I am telling you that these are exponential random variables, they are independent, but they are not identically distributed, they have different parameters, okay. So, uh, so in this case what, so f, uh, so if you have f x i of x will be equal to 1 minus e power minus lambda i x for x greater than or equal to 0. Correct. Remember this. Remember C D exponentials. Right. So this is the C D F. Right. And for x less than zero, this is zero. Okay. It looks like that. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at y is equal to minimum of x one dot 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 x n. I'm looking at the minimum of these independent exponentials. Okay. So, now what happens? So, I will have f y of y will be equal to product, well I should say f y bar is not it, f y bar is equal to product uh, i equals 1 through n f x i bar of y correct because now x i's are independent they are not identically distributed so i cannot take nth power correct so this will be equal to what so f x i bar will be e power minus lambda i x so i am multiplying so i am multiplying product i equals 1 through n e power minus lambda i y correct yes or no and this will be equal to what e power minus sum over i equals 1 through n lambda i times y now what does this mean It means that y is is also an exponential, right? Y is an exponential with parameter sum of the lambda i's. So if you take, so what does it mean? So if you take n independent exponentials with parameter lambda one, lambda two, lambda n, then the minimum is distributed as also an exponential with parameter sum of the lambdas, right? So y is I can write exponential with parameter sum over i lambda i. Okay. You can also compute the distribution of the maximum. What would you do? You will just multiply not the complementary CDF, the CDF themselves. You will multiply all these guys, but you, that you will that you will not get anything nice. You will get some distribution you get the product of all these guys, right. So, the maximum will be some distribution, the minimum is an exponential. So, the minimum of independent exponentials is always an exponential and the parameter is the sum of the parameters of the individual ones. So, this has a very nice practical interpretations. Uh, remember that I mentioned exponential is this memoryless distribution that, uh, that arises frequently in uh, let us say radioactive decay, right. So, each let us say that each of these corresponds to the ith sample they may be they are all different radioactive elements or something. So, they, they 
emit alpha, alpha particles at different rates right so and the expo the each sample light sample let us say has inter emission duration is exponential with parameter lambda i and you let let us say that they all are emitting at one point at, at in some place and the minimum of these is the time to the first emission correct you have all these independent samples emitting. So, the if they are all in independent exponential times the time duration for your first the time for you to see the first emission coming out is also an exponential right is that understood. So, yeah so this has lots of nice properties right. So, this is uh, this these expo inter exponent inter emission times being independent exponentials is a very uh, well known process called the Poisson process ok. So, it has lots of nice properties we will not study it in this course uh, in any great detail, but there is another course called stochastic modeling right uh, which will be offered next semester uh, that that is half the course is about these Poisson processes ok. So, that is just f y i ok, but all you need to know now is that the minimum of exponential is also an exponential independent exponential is also an exponential ok I will stop here.